And now for a special episode of Emily Sophia's Dexter Vlogs. Hello there, my sexy Dexter fans. If in fact you are all still sexy and you still have the skin on your faces after that devastating nuclear bomb <laughs> two minute Dexter season eight footage release, if you haven't seen it, um, would I recommend that you watch it? Well, if you want to have explosive emotional diarrhea for the next few months, then go for it. Um, we can all be friends together, um, guzzle some Pepto-Bismol for the heart, and cry <laughs> together. So, link in the description and annotation here. Um, God. <laughs> I am, like, laughing so much. It's like, have you ever had those times where you are just so maddeningly upset? and destroyed inside that you laugh instead of cry like that is where I'm at I I don't even know I think that something came disconnected in my brain um so and I'll let you know that this is the first Dexter vlog that I have ever filmed where I have had notes I had to take notes of my thoughts because I am so mentally, emotionally, intellectually, spiritually, and psychologically damaged and in all ways compromised that I didn't know if I was just going to sit in front of the camera and just... I don't know. I don't know. So I'm going to try and keep track of myself on this. This is the one thing that is keeping like what's in my brain in there instead of coming out here in here and out of all my orifices, okay? Um, so let me let me tell you a little story, okay? Um, just to to open up this experience of uh, Dexter trauma therapy, okay? So once upon a time, there was a girl who cried a river and drowned the whole world, and then there was another girl, and her name was Emily. And she was sitting in her geology class. She was having a pretty fun time. Um, they were doing a mock UN um, meeting, meeting of nations about global environmental policy. And she was playing the part of China, which is really fun because I got to be a communist and, uh, you know, it was fun. I was China. It was great. And then all of, or I mean, she, she rather, okay, sorry to, you know slip in my narrative voice there. <laughs> anyway, so this girl, her phone started um, vibrating incessantly. She thought she'd turn it on silent and she had not. And so she was starting to wonder whether this was her phone or if it was in fact um, a 10.0 on the Richter scale earthquake. And so she looks at her phone and there are thousands of, of uh, texts from um, Twitter notifications so I was like, why, what is going on? Who died? What exploded? She, she looked. Wow, I'm, I'm terrible at telling the story. She looked and everyone was two words. Dexter footage. More like the end of my existence, okay? So she's like, well, on that note, I'm going to leave class and go see what in the unholy everything is going on. And she did. And, um, you know, nobody really knows what happened to her. Um, some say that, some say that the angels came down from heaven and transported her away before she could throw up on everyone in her existence. Some say that she is sitting in front of a camera right now making a vlog about the most soul-ripping TV show in the history of Earth. You never know. You just, you just never know. So the moral of the story is never love anything because it will hurt you in the end. Okay? So that's my story. Anyways, I, I feel like Showtime cyber bullied us today. 
not gonna lie, I and I had a bunch of caffeine today, so I'm all shaky and everything is just wrong inside. And <laughs> I sort of feel like the self-proclaimed um, Dexter president, because you know it's like when a tragic event happens and the president is supposed to like issue a formal statement to the world about you know how he feels about what happened, even though there's nothing he can do about it. And that's sort of like what I feel like, because I would rather be curled up on the floor eating Pop-Tarts with my Dexter poster and telling him it's all going to be okay. Ugh, and then, um, you know, if you've ever seen Spongebob, it's like that episode where Mr. Krabs lost his one millionth dollar when he's like out fishing for clams in the lagoon. I, it's like the projectile crying, like ripping my eyeballs out of my head in like jump roping with them, that's basically me right now in front of you inside, okay? <laughs> and, I, and I tweeted about this, I tweeted so much ridiculous stuff today. Um, it was like that quote from episode eight of season seven where Deborah's like, you pick the one way you could hurt me worse than you will ever understand. And then I follow that up with, you know, the Hannah quote from last season as well, you should have killed me, showtime. Hint, hint, you should have sent Dexter over and just gotten the deed done because now I'm probably gonna kill someone because nothing is okay. But before, okay, now I'm officially gonna get into everything now that I've just gotten all of that off of my chest-ish. There's still a lot more that is on my chest and I'm wearing, I'm wearing my I Heart Dexter shirt just to remind myself that I love this show and that it's not going to be the end of me, potentially. Um, so, one thing that's important to know about this footage is that it's from the premiere. This is not a, a spliced, uh, you know, containment of footage from throughout the entire season, because if it was, I might have already uh, set fire to my eyes and other parts of me. Probably would have. Um, so, the thing that's tough about this is, you know, here's the big question. What did we all expect was going to happen after the end of season seven, okay? And, um, you know, we, we saw how season seven ended after what happened with La Guerta, and Dexter and Deb are kind of weaving their way through the big New Year's party, and they're just like phantoms. They're like ghosts. They are completely elsewhere. They are not a part of anything that is going on around them. It is just them locked in this complete ambiguity of emotion they don't know what's going on and Deborah you know Deborah is clinging on to Dexter's arm just looking dazed just like like a tired scared child just kind of you know kind of wandering about like sleepwalking almost and so and it almost seems you know from that just the way that Deborah is touching him that they are they're connected together but what this suggests is you know like, like we were all talking about, there is going to be a time skip, okay? And, and this, so it suggests that Deborah has not talked to Dexter in weeks. He has been calling her, you know, and that's so significant because the beginning of season one, Dex, it starts off with Deborah leaving all these voicemails for Dexter, and he's listening to them and just kind of smiling, and he's like, you know, if I could have feelings for anyone, it'd be for Deb, okay? And now he truly is starting to feel for Deb, and we can see that resonate so strongly in this preview. Um, so what did we expect? Did we expect that, you know, everything is now hunky-dory, they got over that, you know, the awkward elephant in the room of like, whoops, you're a killer, I'm not a killer, I support the law and morality and stuff, and okay, now that I've killed someone for you, let's do this together, it'll be great. And I think, you know, some of us kind of, <laughs> we're thinking, yeah, yeah, totally, that's, that's how it's gonna go down, you know, we're gonna come back and uh, Deb's gonna be, you know, knocking the person out, and Dexter's gonna be stripping off their clothes, get the plastic, you know, it's gonna be like tag teaming it, you know? Is that really what we expected? Is is that really what we thought was gonna come about with someone like Deborah? okay? I don't think, you know, I think that the writers really, honestly, as much as it hurts, the writers would be cheating us to suggest that Deb would not react the way that she is in this clip, okay? that That's kind of the way that I see it. Um, another thing that's important to consider is that, you know, it's La Guerta 
who Deborah had to put down for Dexter last season. And that is no small freaking matter, okay? Because LaGuerta, in so many ways, is to Deborah a mother figure. Deborah's mother, um, I believe that she she died um, when she and Dexter were fairly young. She died of cancer. And so Deborah, you know, has had to look up to these men in her life and has become so attached to them and gravitated towards relationships and depending on others and seeking to please others. And she hasn't really had a mother figure to moderate that experience for her, you know? And so LaGuerta is the closest thing that she has had pretty much all this time. She really hasn't even had any girlfriends at all. I mean, except for that, um, oh, the records keeper at Miami Metro, but she kind of came and went, which is unfortunate. And uh, so just thinking of who it was that Deborah had to put down, who LaGuerta subconsciously was to Deborah, it's huge. It, you know, it's not like Deborah killed someone in order to protect Dexter, you know, just some arbitrary person. This was someone of gravity and weight in her life, an anchor, a person who she looked at to learn more about herself. You know, LaGuardia was not the best of women, but she set an example for Deborah in some way. And Deborah, and she embodies the law which Deb has subscribed to and supported so fiercely and so loyally all her life. And she put everything on the line for Dexter. Everything. I don't know why I'm yelling, but God, it's just, mm. Okay, another thing we need to know is that Deborah is not a sociopath. As much as we might think, you know, that her being so close to Dexter, finding out he's a serial killer, you know, some logical process might lead us to believe that maybe she could go down that road herself because she's been so all about him all this time. And it's like, okay, now I know who you are, so. Maybe I should do it too. It'll make it easier, you know? Um, <laughs> but that's that's not who Deb is, you know? She has a sense of guilt and consequence. And Dexter truly does not possess that. I think in some ways he's kind of coming to, you know? But that's not who Deborah is. And so this is has rocked her universe and knocked her back on her just... It has knocked her over completely. She is floored, you know, to wet cement and it is drying about her and sucking her in in just this knowledge of what she's done and what she has gone against. Um, furthermore, there's a lot of, you know, as many of you know, there's a lot of dramatic irony to the show and we're constantly biased to Dexter's side because, you know, being kind of our, uh, an, audience member to his thoughts, we become connected to him. And so we saw that LaGuardia was such a huge problem for him that, you know, okay, finally she's out of the way, you know, um, it's sort of like that other little um, Dexter slash Ray Donovan trailer where, you know, Dexter's like a better person would feel bad about what happened to LaGuardia, but it's all dumb problems. And that's who Dexter is, you know, fundamentally, who he's been all this time. And so we're so biased to Dexter's side and we're like, come on, Deb, just let it go. It's fine. You did what you had to do, in the words of Hannah. But for her, it is not that simple. It never has been, and I don't think it ever will be. That would be sacrificing the true nature of Deb, and you know, we've got to keep it consistent no matter how hard that is. So um, my, my camera's dying, so I'm really trying to, to work through this. Um, also, it's interesting because this is sort of uh, Deborah's reaction to Dexter in this trailer. It's kind of a direct reversal of her uh, grief response to what happened with her uh, with Brian Moser back in season one and season two. You know, she's struggling so much. She moves in with Dexter and she is just completely fixed onto him in the midst of her grief. And now she is repelling the opposite way, you know. It's the difference between, you know, someone who you kind of knew a little bit and they wanted to marry you and you found out they were a killer and they tried to kill you versus the person who has been there through that entire experience and saved you from that is another killer. It's an inescapable vortex of woe and misery for Deborah. So, you know, she has, she has to completely push away, shove off. She's done. It hurts too much. Um, you know, it's that un unbearable sacrifice. She's lost a sense of self and of the ability to trust in others um and dexter to her represents um a compromise of herself you know she tells dexter that she hates him 
God, I hated to hear her say that. She hates him because of what he made her do or what she had to do for him. And so she sees that as being his fault, which, you know, that is, it's part of the grieving process for her. Um, you know, we see that Deborah is, she's consumed in her work. I don't know if she's at Miami Metro, if she's taken some kind of leave of absence. It sounds like she's working with a private investigator, uh, Elway, who Dexter is inquiring about, and it's it's very, oh man, um, you know, so she's, she's keeping with work and she's doing what she always does. She can't stop moving. It's sort of like how she was addicted to working out um, in season two after the whole uh, Brian shenanigans happened, you know? And it's, it's so interesting because this scene really embodies the fact that Dexter is finding his humanity. He's realizing who Deborah is to him, ultimately. Whereas um, Deborah is overcome with it. And she would probably do anything to be able to be like Dexter, as weird as that sounds, you know, to be able to not care. But she, she can't not care, and so she hates the fact that Dexter can't care about what happened, that she had to sacrifice, who is basically this mother figure, for him in order to let him survive. And, and she is just so overcome with that. We really have to keep that in mind as we look at what's going on with little Debbie, okay? Um, also, very interesting how Dexter asks, you know, if she's uh, sleeping with the guy um, who she's working with. And uh, it's, it's pretty much a complete uh, mirroring of what happened in episode eight of last season when she was asking the same thing about him and Hannah and there's almost sort of jealousy. Probably because, you know, she's completely uh, been repulsed by him and is pushing him away. And so, now it's kind of some interesting stuff there for you. Uh, God, you know, that's pretty crazy writing. Wow, so I just got a phone call that my friend who is deploying for the Middle East with the Army is coming to visit me in 15 minutes, so I'm gonna try and keep going with this. I am so many kinds of emotional right now. Ugh, okay, moving on. So, as I was saying, you know, Dexter's realizing who Deborah truly is to him, and, um, I feel like I'm, I'm gonna repeat myself, but hey, I'll repeat and then move on real fast. So, uh, and for those of you who saw the uh, Ray Donovan slash Dexter teaser that came out um, a couple weeks ago, maybe? Or day is something? Time is what? Bananas? Um, anyways, so <laughs> Deborah is, is telling him, you know, all my life I thought it was me who needed you, but it was the other way around. So Deb just delivers that devastating line to um, to Dexter and wow, I can't wait to see how he is going to take that if he's going to own that or just be completely overwhelmed with who Deborah has become of late feel maybe he too will feel guilt, but um So, you know, I think that that kind of ties in, you know, Dexter is is finally in a place of wow like Deborah is his anchor and his sacrifice so much for him and now he's realizing just how much she has and oof, I, I really want to see him take responsibility in that process that would just be mind shattering as if our minds are not already in a thousand little pieces <sighs> anyway so I talked about the time skip uh, yes I'm totally looking at my notes right now <laughs> and you know basically the way I see this whole crazy scenario is it's always darkest before the dawn. And that's not to say that there's going to be a glorious dawn and, you know, sunshine and frosty swirls, you know, coming later in in this season, um, depending on how you look at that whole situation. But uh, I think, you know, it's got to be harder before it gets better. Um, like, I, I think that things are going to change on Deborah's part towards Dexter as he starts to potentially take responsibility for the things that he has sort of put her through. Um, so I think there's a lot of room for the dynamic to change and grow and become something crazy and beautiful in the midst of this pain, you know. Uh, uh, so we start with all this grit in this, this hate and burning devastation everywhere. Um, 
and maybe we're gonna get a diamond somewhere along the way, you know? Um, Scott Buck said that they're going to be bonded in tragedy, but I, I just can't imagine them making the entire season this painful. I hate you, I hate you, I should have killed you when I had the chance. I mean, it's, it's freaking me out, because, you know, the worst case scenario in my mind is Deborah ultimately putting Dexter down you know, after everything, that is the last thing I want to see, and I just, uh, there's, there's really no way of, of saying for sure what's going to happen, and I wish there was so, so desperately, so ardently, so we're just gonna hang in there and do the best we can, and, um, I'll be here as your support group leader, um, <laughs> through the whole <laughs> process that this show is gonna take us through. This is just me or is it hot in here, okay? Seriously, I am going to explode. I already did. I'm gonna do it again a few more times. That's all I gotta say. <sighs> so, let me know how you guys reacted and what you were thinking and feeling, or if you can't feel your limbs because I'll try and take you to a digital hospital through YouTube something. We'll, we'll work it out, I promise, I promise. Us Dexter fans have to stick together. <sighs> So my camera is completely and utterly dying, but let me just say that season eight has been revealed officially to be the last season. So if that wasn't, you know, <laughs> if the trailer wasn't enough for you, well now you know that this is gonna be the last. So we have to hope for the best. And um, also the first season eight cast photo has been released. So I think that an, um, a high quality version is going to be released of that soon. There's a link in the description of that. So let me know what you guys think of that particular photo as well. Um, I think, I'm so happy that they actually did one. Um, and I think it's so significant, you know, to see that Dexter is at the focus and everyone is looking at him. You know, the truth is coming out. That is a huge theme of this season, I think. And uh, so let me know what you guys think of these uh, significance of this photo, what you think it might be. I have so much more to say, but my camera's dying and apparently my friend is coming over. And apparently my favorite show is trying to murder me. I should have expected this, you know, shows about serial killers and whatnot. It was about time that um, got my just desserts, apparently. Um, I love you all so much. Thank you for listening to this and bearing with me. And I have high hopes that things are going to change. <laughs> Oh, it's in the words of, of Anne Berlin, you know, oh, oh, things are gonna change now for the better, and oh, I hope so. <laughs> um, gosh, because as of right now, it's I've got the gun. All I need is 10 cents for the bullet as I think over this insanity. Please, Deborah, I promise I will help you if you'll let me. Don't do that. Don't stop. Just please. I don't want to. I can't. Well, I'm going to go cry with my foot now. So, mwah. thank you so much for watching and subscribe if you want more Dexter craziness. And, um, that's about all I got. I'm going to go die now. Bless you all. Well, hang in there. This is support group meeting numero uno. Let's keep this up, shall we? Okay, bye.